Welcome to Slow News Day with Kevin Clark. I am Kevin Clark. <laughs> Zoom in on this. This is Mitchell Trubisky's passing chart at one point on Sunday afternoon against the Eagles. This is the last thing you see before you die. This is, <laughs> this is the type of chart where like at the beginning of an earthquake movie, somebody would see it and say, call the president. <laughs> Above the fold, Mitchell Trubisky, the aforementioned Mitchell Trubisky. Let's start with this, Lamar Jackson, this man is the MVP. This leads us to what we're talking about today, which is quarterbacks and how we view them. Now, Lamar Jackson was the 32nd overall pick, 2018 draft, fifth quarterback selected. Josh Allen went before that. Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, gonna get to him in a little bit. Josh Rosen went before that. All these quarterbacks at this point don't like they're gonna have the type of career that Lamar Jackson is going to have. What do we learn when a big group of quarterbacks comes into football? Well, we learn where the league is at. 2016, learned a lot about the league through the journeys of Goff and Wentz and Prescott. 2017 is, I think, going to go down as the most interesting and impactful class of this generation. Mitchell Trubisky goes second overall. Then two quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson, go 10 and 12th respectively. And those picks change football because Patrick Mahomes looks like he might be the best player of his generation. And Deshaun Watson looks like he's right it may be a cut below. I want to tell you about the NFL.com scouting reports when these guys came into the league. And I don't mean to specifically impugn NFL.com, but it's instructive the conventional wisdom at the time. Mitchell Trubisky, adequate height with good muscular definition. First of all, same. <laughs> Second of all, if that's the first line, hopefully it gets better. Scout, quoted in there. Sometimes it looks like Carson Wentz. Sometimes he looks like Blaine Gabbert. Now folks, if you can say sometimes he looks like Blaine Gabbert, he's probably not worth the second overall pick. Okay, that, that's something that we should all be clear on and we should all should have been clear on it by 2017. Let's go with the Texans quarterback, Sean Watson. What was his scouting report? Tremendous leader and winner. So there was one quarterback who had muscle definition in his face and one of them was a tremendous leader and winner and one of them won 10 picks behind the other. Uh, you're never gonna believe which one is which. Now let's go with Mahomes. Needs to play inside the offense and show more discipline. Too eager to go big game hunting. Ravenous appetite for the explosive play can also bring unwanted trouble. Hmm. He does all those things, but instead of bringing unwanted trouble, he is the best quarterback in football and the reigning MVP. There's a quote in here that I just absolutely love. NFC executive, he's gonna drive his head coach crazy for the first couple years and there's no getting around that. Fact check, false. <laughs> quarterback position is changing. The coaches have changed with it but evaluation hasn't changed. And that's a really strange thing. I think that we need to realize that special players can be special. Lamar Jackson, you can build an offense around him. That was the risk. The risk was, how are you gonna build an offense around him? How are you gonna build the scheme around him? Why don't you take this special player and figure it out later, rather than figuring out who's going to play within the offense? If you're concerned about who can play within the offense, your offense probably sucks, your idea probably sucks, and eventually your quarterback's gonna suck. I have all these stats about football, and I'm not even going to read them. What's your bet? What's the best one? Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson, under pressure, have better quarterback ratings than Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield when not under pressure. Source the material. Pro football focus. Ever heard of it? Other headlines. Los Angeles Chargers. Report comes out of The Athletic Monday night, denied by the Chargers that they might move to London, or they're considering, or they would listen to, to London. A couple things to unpack here about the Chargers and the London experiment. They are paying $645 million to move from San Diego to Los Angeles. Imagine if that were a security deposit. Imagine you're moving into a new building, and you paid $645 million. You get there, and you find out nobody in your building wants you there, you're not gonna make the money back you thought you would, and pretty much you're completely irrelevant to your new city, okay? Now, any of us would pay a couple thousand bucks, we'd learn that, we're like, oh, it sucks, and we'd move away. The Chargers are spending $645 million to earn this. If the NFL would say you could transfer that to London, you can keep paying the same payments, you don't have to pay more, that would solve a lot of problems. The Chargers cut revenue projections on their PSLs from $400 million to $150 million to reflect the fact that nobody wants to go see their product in Los Angeles. That's really bad. And I understand the NFL is gonna keep saying they're committed to this and other owners might say it publicly, but you have to understand, revenue sharing means everybody in the NFL has to make tons of money. That's what the NFL owners have based their, their business model on. And if you're the one team dragging that down, people are gonna shoot daggers at you until you figure it out. 
moving to London, even though the Chargers say it's not going to happen, it should happen. This is an escape hatch for everybody. Baker Mayfield, a lot of criticism about his look. I just think it's really unfair that Baker Mayfield's being dragged for this look. <laughs> My hair is gonna be insane when I take this hood off. My hair is always oh. insane. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't let a Lamar Jackson MVP performance not lead to an appearance for Mallory Rubin, our resident Ravens fan. Oh! Mallory. Hello, great to be here. Let's do MVP odds right now. Okay, wait, do you feel, do you feel a chill in the air? I'm wearing uh, multiple layers, so no. <laughs> did the, did the Lamar should play receiver? Yeah. Lamar is really a running back, hot takes, fizzle out. Oh! It's burn. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, the, the hot takes went out. The hot takes, Kev, where did they go? Where did they go? Where did they go? We're gonna see the eye flames. Go, Where go, go. Where did they go? Not oh my bad god. for a running back. Oh Trunks. my god. Okay, pause. Great bit. Let's fix your mind. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> He's great. <laughs> yeah, I, that's out there. So the MVPs at this point, we got Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. We've got Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. We've got Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. And we've got Lamar Jackson. Indeed. Tell Woo! me, Woo! tell me how what the path is for Lamar to Swoop in, steal that award. Stay in the course, man. Just keep doing it. Consistent excellence, continuing to surprise people, silencing the doubters. Yeah. You got a head-to-head -head with Deshaun Watson. The Texans game, that's gonna be special. Obviously, not sure if you've been paying attention, already had a head-to-head -head with Russell Wilson and yeah. the Seahawks. And Tom Brady. Who? Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. Who? Who's the Han Solo of the NFL? Just so happens that I was prepared for just such an eventuality today, and I didn't think that you would say, here's a Star Wars character, who's the NFL player, but I did anticipate that you would say, which Star Wars character is Lamar Jackson? Oh, and is it Han Solo? It's Han Solo. Oh. Here's why? why. One word. Swagger. When you think of Han Solo, what do you think of? I think of wanting to f*** Harrison Ford, but what do you think of? Uh, wanting to f*** Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> He's cool. He's the guy you love to watch and the guy you want to be. Charisma, charm, nerve, daring, but also that heart. You know you can count on him to be loyal in the end. Mallory Rubin, your birthday is in September. You're a Virgo, is that correct? That's correct, September 16th. Now you're not gonna have any excuse for forgetting. I didn't forget. Calm down! <laughs> no, I just felt like that was accusatory. Virgo, are you, are you, <laughs> are you happy with your lot in life? You should be because there are so many options available to you now that, that your only real problem is deciding between them. Think about this, 99% of the world's population will happily swap places with you. This is Lamar Jackson oriented, I, it's true. I assume. Yeah, everybody out there talking shit for years yeah. and now if you don't have them on your fantasy team and you're not a Ravens fan, you're filled with a jealous rage. And what do we know about jealousy? The shadow of greed, that is. What's that, is that from Star Wars? Yeah. Is that really from Star Wars? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Time for Club Kevin. Oh, I wanna yeah. put the Little Mermaid in. Let me ask you a question, Mallory. Okay. We were arguing about this before. Before. Was... Where do I rank Prince Eric on handsome cartoon characters? Who's number one for you? Glad you asked. <laughs> hmm. I think I'll go with Tarzan. Wow. That wild energy, you yeah. know? I do think, BD. just to really connect it all here, that... <laughs> so, Jason Gallagher thinks that The Little Mermaid was not a human, or even half of a human, until the end of the movie. Is this a question on the physiology of a mermaid, or is this a, like, existential philosophical a, discussion on the nature of humanity? I think it's the latter. I think it's the latter. Well, of course she was a person. Of course she was. But I think BB-8 is a person. Who's that? Little Mermaid, welcome to Club Kevin. It's live. When is it? Is this tonight? Yeah. So it'll be completely irrelevant by the time this airs. 